So, you wanted to see me not only build a deck, test it against some of the top Yu-Gi-Oh strategies, and make adjustments accordingly, putting a deck through a gauntlet. Say no more, big dog, we too strong. What's going on with ya, big dog? And I hope you are having an amazing day. If you are not, don't let what happened at the beginning of your day ruin the rest of your day because today it's gauntlet time. That's right, you heard me correct. We are going to be picking heroes this time around, putting them through the test, going against some of the top meta decks, and then establishing a build that you can relate to because uh, you saw it get built. A couple weeks ago, I did say heroes are a tier one deck, and here is the time to prove it. Heroes are going to be going against some of the top tier Yu-Gi-Oh strategies, and I'm going to be showing you the advantages, the disadvantages, the struggles, the benefits of playing the hero strategy. So, uh, let's jump on in so I can show you the starting build. Plus, um, Vaporeon may need a saucer to drink out of. All right, big dog. So what we're going to do is go over a really quick profile, explain why I built this hero deck this particular way and how I think it's going to perform against some of the top decks. Uh, for the monsters, three copies of Stratos, one copy of Solid Soldier and one copy of Liquid Soldier. This is normally a very standard package. I know some people are dropping Solid Soldier from their builds. Um, the reason why I decided to keep it is because I do like its first and second effect, being able to gain an additional summon that can come up like Solid Soldier plus any other hero monster is a Predaplant Vert. And also being able to fuse with it also gives you a summon from the graveyard. Liquid Soldier is just a really free draw two cards, discard one card and summon from the graveyard. On top of that, uh, this is the best hero water monster. Sorry, Bubble Man. Next is two copies of Shadow Mist to be able to search. And then moving on to the Vision Hero package, we run three copies of Ferris, two copies of Vion, and one copy of Increase. There's a pretty big debate over how many Increase you should play, and I think that math really solves this conundrum that we're in. If you run two copies of Increase, the odds of you drawing one copy of Increase shoot up to 22% from your 11%. If you won one copy of Increase, the odds of you drawing Increase is 11%. Of course, there is a little bit more to that, but I'm just gonna leave it at that when it comes to Vision Hero Increase. I think that that is a sufficient answer. Moving on to the Destiny Hero Monsters, one Denier, one Celestial, one Plasma, and two copies of Destiny Hero Malicious. I think that Celestial is the weakest card here, but it is a draw two cards on the next turn. Other than that, all of these Destiny Hero Monsters are fantabulous. And then I do run the one copy of Evil Hero Duster Gold. Um, this is just really standard for a lot of hero builds. I think I wanted to go as standard as possible without doing anything, and then I can make adjustments afterward. Moving forward, three copies of Fusion Destiny. This is the best card in the deck, probably. Probably not, but probably. Three copies of Forbidden Chalice, three copies of Forbidden Droplet. I play no hand traps inside of this deck. I actually want to go second, address your board, and then OTK you if possible. So I felt that both Forbidden Chalice and Forbidden Droplet are very good in that aspect. I also played three copies of Super Polymerization. And the reason why I decided to play Super Polymerization is because while I'm making a board, if my opponent decides to disrupt me, I can change Super Polymerization. Let me give you an example. If I summon Elemental Hero Stratos and my opponent uses Effect Veiler, I can Super Polymerization my Elemental Hero Stratos and a card on their side of the field, get the effect of my Stratos, help break the board, and of course, uh, you know, get another monster to my side of the field. So I thought that that was really cool in that dimension. And then three copies of Match Change to change any of my heroes into the appropriate masked monster. One copy of Miracle Fusion, one copy of Polymerization, one copy of Dark Calling, one copy of Emergency Call, one copy of Reinforcement of the Army, and one copy of A Hero Lives. I used to be a guy that was on three copies of Emergency Call, and I don't think that it's a bad idea in any sense of the word. Uh, the reason why I decided to drop it to one is because I wanted to keep this at a 40 card deck, and searching my hero monsters isn't as important, at least that's how I think right now. Moving on for the extra deck, one cross, one Predaplant Vert. I do think that this card is important. One copy of Extra Hero Wonder Driver. Uh, there's two copies of Mass Hero Dark Law here. One Absolute Zero, one Phoenix Destroyer, one Acid, one Trinity, one Blast, one Starving Venom for Super Poly, one Bane, one Sunriser, one uh, Shining for Super Poly, and one Great Tornado for Super Poly. But that's it for the main board and the extra deck. Let's jump into a game and see how powerful this deck is. So my first game, I get to go against one of the best decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! 
and Phantom Knight, and my opponent opens a pretty good hand. Normal summoning Torrent Scales and Extender to make Cherubini, Cherubini to send Graf and then Seer, and then Link summon into his best Link monster. If you can stop Captain Rusty, you can pretty much stop the next turn, but I don't play hand traps. So his Captain Rusty is going to send a Cloak to set his Frog Blade, one form of interruption, and now his Cloak is going to banish to add Stain Greaves, which will also trigger the effect of his Torn Scales. Since he did Special Summon, he'll Special Summon a to a Stain Greaves from his hand and then make Levier. Levier to detach two special summon boots, giving him an amazing grind game for the next turn, but also giving his Bardis 800 attack that comes up. He'll then special summon boots to be able to link into Artifact Dagda, and then link his remaining two monsters into a Purta Plant for Anaconda. And now I'm in trouble. He can use the effect of Purta Plant for Anaconda to summon DPE, but Dagda will also trigger to set Artifact Scythe. Because he can use DPE to destroy cards on his side of the field, he'll destroy the Scythe on my turn and then spell summon the Scythe prevent me from special summoning from the extra deck. There's not really a lot that I can do about that. My hand's not amazing and he has four cards face down. That's going to be game one. Pretty sad. Game two, I'm looking to get back in there, but he's still going to go first. Tour guide for his graph, being able to link both of those monsters off into Cherubini, he's going to have the exact same combo. Special summoning a Seer to his side of the field and then using Cherubini to send Cloak, he'll then link those two monsters into his Captain Rusty. Rusty will be able to eventually lead to the exact same combo, except this time around, instead of four cards phase down, I'm going to have to deal with just a little mo. He's going to make his uh, DPE as well as his set Scythe, but he's going to have an astonishing, and I mean an astonishing five cards phase down. How will I break this board? On my turn, he tries to use his DPE's effect, but I'm going to go ahead and respond with Forbidden Droplet, sending a Destiny Hero Malicious. He's going to go ahead and call by my Destiny Hero Malicious before I can use this effect. That's okay. Normal summon Stratos. He's going to use his Fog Blade on the Stratos, but I got the Mash Change, boy! Morphing my Stratos into a Mask Hero Blast, and then on using its effect to reduce, he's going to Fog Blade again. He wants to keep his Rusty. I'll go ahead and add from my deck to my hand the Shadow Mist and then activate Vision Hero Ferris. This is looking like an OTK maybe. Discarding the Elemental Hero Shadow Mist to be able to special summon the Ferris and then adding in a Duster and using the Increase. Now, I'll activate the effect of my Master Hero Blast and his Chainlink 2, use the effect of my Vision Hero Increase. That means I'll be able to resolve the effect of my Master Hero Blast, getting rid of his remaining back row. Increase spell summons Vion, Vion sends Denier, and then I'll add Polymerization by banishing the Shadow Mist. I'll discard the Aduster for my Dark Fusion, and then I'll activate Polymerization, fusing all three monsters into Vision Hero Trinity and the Dark Calling for my Malicious Bane. This is enough to clean it up. But if I do need more, I do got the ammo, but we ain't gonna talk about that. This is enough for game. Moving on to game three. He's gonna tell me to go first, and I should have seen this coming. But my hero lives find Stratos, Solid Soldier into Vion. Vion to be able to send a Destiny Hero Malicious from my deck to the graveyard. I'll then use Malicious to banish four Malicious. And then we're going to figure out what we're going to do. I've already paid half of my life points. Will I pay half again? Linking into a Predator Plant for Anaconda. And then we're going to go ahead and use the effect of Vision Hero Vion to banish Stratos to add Polymerization. Following up, we'll use the effect of Predator Plant Vert Anaconda to be able to send Destiny Hero Monsters. That is actually incorrect. I'm supposed to send a level 6 and higher and the Destiny Hero Denier to make my DPE. Unfortunately, it wasn't caught, but it doesn't change the outcome of the game. I'll set one card face down and pass my turn. My opponent starts off with Phantom Knight Cloak. I'll immediately read the cloak and then mash change my Vion into a Dark Law, fearing Solomon Great Al Mirage place. But now every card is going to be banished on his side of the field. He'll follow up by special summoning boots, making a break sword. Now use DBE's effect to destroy the break sword. And the best thing about it is that all of his materials were banished, meaning he can't use break sword. During my turn, DBE comes right back. I'll banish malicious to special summon a malicious, and then I'll use denier and malicious for a wonder driver. I'll activate polymerization, fusing two monsters to make Sunriser, and then I'm going into mad overkill mode, as I definitely have more cards like Miracle Fusion and Dark Fusion in my hand. This is game. 
So what exactly did I learn from my game with Phantom Knight? So there are some cards that I'm a little leery about. I think that they may be underperformers, but I don't have enough data uh, to actually call them out. I think I want to get a little bit more information, but there are some cards that I felt overperformed, like just amazing cards. And that would have to go to Forbidden Droplet. I mean, instead of playing hand traps and going for a going second board breaking stance, actually proved to be pretty fruitful with three copies of Droplet three copies of chalice mass change is actually technically a forbidden droplet as you can use your stratos like you've seen before to morph it into master o blast preventing your opponent from using cards like effect veiler infinite and permanent just normal monster negations and then blast is actually not a bad card on its own and then super polymerizations while they didn't come up in that particular game i think that this card will be uh fairly decent getting over dpe Using my Destiny Hero in an opponent's DPE for my own DPE would be pretty clutch. Can't wait till that happens. But essentially, I have 12 copies of cards that allow me to go second fairly effectively. And that's exactly what you want to see inside of a hero build. Now, there was one card that I did feel... Uh, I'm not going to take out just yet, but I don't feel is a great card. And that is the Elemental Hero Liquid Soldier. Uh, the reason why is because in almost every situation that I could have made that super deadly combo, which if you guys did not know is Elemental Hero Absolute Zero and then morphing it into a Masked Hero Acid, it never came up. And that was fairly disappointing because being able to do this against a Phantom Knight board was probably the best opportunity that I could have. So I am a little bit leery about this and some other cards, but I'm not going to take them out just yet. I have another game coming up. Let's see how it works. Going against another very powerful deck in 2021 and eventually 2022 as his Foolish Burial Goods is going to find his Qinglong to be able to add his Lulu, and then he's going to use Quailun to place Chuche to his side of the field. Then he's going to go ahead and use the effect of Lulu to send another Qinglong to the graveyard to be able to special summon Lulu and add a Lao Lao. Lao Lao's effect to be able to send to the graveyard and then special summon a GG, and then he's going to special summon the Nan Nan to his side of the field. Virtual World is already making the board that I don't want to see, and it's just any board. Linking into his ultimate, or synchroing into his ultimate Zulkin, he'll then set a card face down to be able to special summon Crystal Wing to his side of the field. He'll finish his turn with that, and I'm like, oh, this is an easy board. I'll activate a Hero Lifts. He'll flip an Imperial Order, and I'm like, whoa, peace out. That's game. The only thing more irritating than losing to Imperial Order is having to stick to your game plan, meaning that I still have to let him go first. And if he opens Imperial Order again, well, I guess he opens Imperial Order again. This time around, he's going to normal summon Nyan Nyan using his Lulu to send a Qinglong to his graveyard, then synchro summoning with both of those monsters after increasing the level of one of them into his virtual world Shin Shin. He's then going to go ahead and follow up with some back row, and this is not a menacing board. As long as one of those cards are in Imperial Order, we'll be okay. I'll go ahead and start off my turn with Reinforcement of the Army. I'll add Elemental Hero Stratos, and then he Droll and Lockbirds me. Okay, that's fine. We're going to go ahead and discard the Stratos to spell summon Ferris, and then he has a response in Infinite Impermanence. Well, I'm going to use Fusion Destiny then. I'm going to special summon my DPE, and I'm going to use DPE to attack over his Shin Shin. Yes, he may have opened all the answers, but Imperial Order was not one of them. Very grateful for that. I use my DPE to destroy my Vion to destroy his face down, but he's going to use Chuche to destroy my DPE. I'm going to set two cards face down and then pass my turn. Moving on to him, I'll special summon DPE back to my side of the field. He's going to go GG uh, by adding it from his Qinglong, discarding his Roshi Lao Lao, and then revealing to his graveyard he only has wind monsters in his graveyard. I'll use DPE to destroy the Nan Nan, meaning he can't synchro or exceed summon, and he has to pass his turn. I'll special summon DPE back to my side of the field, normal summon a Vision Hero Increase, and then special summon a Destiny Hero Malicious. Using both of those monsters for a Link Summon, I'm going to make an extra hero Cross Crusader, Cross Crusader to spell Summon the Malicious, and then potentially Tribute it off to be able to add in a Dusted Gold. And a Dusted Gold, you should already know what it does, it's my one hitter, quitter, adding the Dark Call Link, and then making the monster to go for game. Game 3, he's going to choose to go first, and Quailun into his Chuche, Normal Summoning a GG, and then activating the effect of a Nan Nan. He'll send a Zanwu from his deck to the graveyard and then special summon him, using both of them into his starter's charge warrior and then activating Lao Lao to be able to special summon GG back to his side of the field. GG will allow him to special summon a Nan Nan, 
and then he'll start synchro summoning into ultimate Azoken, setting a card face down, and then making Crystal Wing. Here's where things get really scary, as now he's going to go ahead and synchro summon again into a Muddy Mud Dragon, and then use both of his ultimate Azoken and his Muddy Mud to make, yes, a Kaliga. It's going to be a hard board, and I'm going to go ahead and start off by normal summoning a Vion, and then chaining the Forbidden Droplet, discarding a Droplet, and a Polymerization when he tries to negate. I'll also send a Destiny or a Malicious from my deck to my graveyard, banishing Malicious 2, special summon Malicious, and we in the driver's seat, baby! As he'll go ahead and use Chuche to destroy my Vion, I'll special summon Dark Law with a match change, using both my Malicious and a Dark Law, I know it feels weird, into a Preda Plant for Anaconda. I'll then use my Dusker Gold to be able to discard to add a Dark Calling, and then Dark Calling to summon Evil Hero Malicious Bane. This should be able to wipe his board, as then I'll use the Effect of Vert to special summon DPE, and then DPE to destroy the Vert to destroy the Chuche. We in town, boys! He'll use the Chuche on his turn to destroy my DPE. I'm forced to use DPE's effect. And then he'll spell summon Lao Lao to his side of the field. Lao Lao will summon Lao Lao. Then he'll spell summon GG. Then Nan Nan. And that is a lot of virtual world names. Oh no, what are you doing, baby? He'll make a Fan Fan and a Shin Shin. Getting rid of both my DPE and my Malicious Bane. Inflicting a huge amount of damage and essentially breaking my board. Unfortunately, I can't recover from this. He actually wins the game. Huh. I gotta say, that Virtual World Live Duel was eye-opening. Um, we unfortunately lost, but boy, it was it was clutch. One thing I actually did realize is that this card is not too good. I don't like Super Polymerization inside of this deck. Now, the reason why I thought Super Polymerization was great is because I can go like normal summon Elemental Hero Stratos, activate its effect. If my opponent responds to it, I can super poly it off and gain its effect. And that's still very much true. But what I ran into was that some of my most important effects aren't always Elemental Hero monsters. Like, for example, I wanted to go Vision Hero Ferris in that game and use his effect, and I knew my opponent was going to negate it. I wanted to super polymerization off the Vision Hero Ferris, but unfortunately, the targets that I currently have in deck, they all read Elemental Hero monsters. So, really really unfortunate that all of them uh red elemental hero monsters in their name uh with that being said super polymerization isn't as versatile and i think it's a card that i'm going to cut another thing that i'm finally going to cut even though uh one of the cards went super well in our first game uh miracle fusion was a very fun card to play it allowed me to pop off with some super combos like you said it's seen in the first game but ultimately this card feels win more a lot of times i can already hit for game and uh since i'm going to be dropping a good amount of attributes or an attribute inside of this deck this card becomes a little less viable and that monster is unfortunately going to be liquid soldier i really do like liquid soldier but He's not a good card. Now, there are a couple of reasons why I see Liquid Soldier as not a good card. Back in the day, uh, we used to fusion Destiny to special summon Destiny Hero Dangerous by sending from the deck to the graveyard Shadow Mist and a Destiny Hero monster. That Shadow Mist would add Liquid Soldier from your deck to your hand, and then you can normal summon Liquid Soldier to your side of the field, special summon that Shadow Mist, add a mass change, and voila, you can banish Destiny Hero Malicious if you send it to the graveyard, make Cross Crusader, get into additional search and you have a free dark law nowadays i'd rather just activate fusion destiny to special summon destiny hero phoenix enforcer like 100 percent of the time even when going first if i open fusion destiny i'm going to use the rest of my hands to do whatever it has to do and then i'm just going to summon dpe i'm not saying dark law in a search is bad i'm saying that all of those resources to play another liquid soldier to play the extra deck cards which isn't necessarily a problem but to dedicate those resources just to summoning a dark law in a search it doesn't feel great whereas dpe is a potential special summon a draw to and a destruction as well as a monster that can't really die by battle i think this hero deck is getting extremely dangerous but what i am going to do is i'm going to take out the super polymerizations and replace them with infinite impermanences this is a hand trap that i can even freely use on my turn to get rid of an opponent's card and then ironically i'm going to drop miracle fusion and liquid soldier for more emergency calls i'm dropping hero cards to add a card to search hero cards i've started to realize that getting into elemental hero stratos is really important and a lot of my combos start off with stratos searching the piece that i need Now, the big question is, can heroes beat a top tier, a meta Yu-Gi-Oh deck? My opponent is gonna start off with Moye making a Shishao and then follows up with Long Yuan discarding Tai-A to be able to make his Baron de Flor. 
Uh, this is where a normal board stops, but his doesn't, as he'll use Sacred Sword Summit to spell summon Taie, and then make an Adamantipator Dragon Rizite. How am I going to break this board? Well, it all starts off with the first card. A Hero Lives is going to attempt to get negated by Better on Defloor. Reinforcement of the Army is going to get negated by Adamantipator. And then I'm going to go ahead and follow up with a Ferris discarding the Shadow Mist to be able to not only place the Visionary Increase, but add a Dusted Gold. Emergency Call is going to add that Solid Soldier. Solid Soldier is going to get Normal Summoned. It's going to be attempted to be negated with She Shao, but God, I love Vision Hero. Increase, people think or don't know that it's a trap card. So I'll tribute my Solid Soldier, be able to special summon my Increase to my side of the field, and then I'll be able to special summon my Stratos, which will give me a search. He's going to use that Tenye card to tribute a monster to get some searches. I really don't care, as I'm going to get my Vision Hero Vion, being able to send a Malicious, and then add a Polymerization from my deck to my hand. Here's where I got to think Big Brain, Big Jane. I'm going to go ahead and use my Ferris and my Increase into my Cross Crusader. Cross Crusader will special summon my Destiny Hero Malicious. I'll tribute it to be able to search. It's going to be the Denier this time around. What am I doing? Banishing Destiny Hero Malicious to summon another Malicious to my side of the field. And then we're going to carry on by activating Polymerization, fusing both my Malicious and my Denier into my own DBE without the use of Fusion Destiny. I got to give myself credit every time I do that. Go ahead and discarding the uh, Duster to be able to add a uh, Dark Fusion and then fusing them both. Oh no, even better. No, using my Vion into my extra hero wonder driver. I think this is where I figured out I have a huge combo. And now dark fusion to be able to banish my Aduster as well as my Vion or my Ferris into my malicious Bane. I'll trigger the effect of my extra hero wonder driver, setting the polymerization and then fusing all three of my monsters into a DPE. That is actually enough for me to control the board and go for game. Game two, he's gonna tell me to go first and as luck may have it, my Stratos finds an infinite impermanence, but that infinite impermanence finds a mass change, making mass hero blast dodging the infinite impermanence. It feels really bad that knowing that mass change is really good for that and probably only good for that. I'll then use Ferris discarding my solid soldier and then placing increase into my spell and trap card zone. I'll tribute off the uh, Ferris for the increase special summoning Vion to be able to send shadow mist from my deck to my graveyard. It's very fortunate for him that I didn't draw an additional monster in this particular hand sequence as I'm going to have to kind of wing it this time and then potentially just make Destiny Hero Plasma by tributing all three of my monsters. That's pretty much the best I got. Plasma with two phase downs. Let's see what you can do. He's going to start off by Incredible Ecclesia using Ecclesia's effect to be able to special summon Moye to his side of the field and then using the Long Yuan to special summon a token. I think that this was really smart because he didn't know what my back row is. He makes the Adamantipator reside, really respecting my back row. Fortunately, I didn't really have anything, but I do have increase to be able to place itself into the spell and trap card zone. He'll finish up with a She Shao and Adamantipator Dragon Rizite and adding a Sword Soul Blackout. So it's going to be up to me to break this board. I'm going to use E-Call. E e He's going to negate. I'm going to chain Chalice. And then I'm going to normal summon Stratos. He's going to negate. I'm going to chain Vision Hero Increase. People forget that. I'm then going to go ahead and normal summon, or I'm going to special summon my Vision Hero Vion. He's going to use Blackout. I'm going to chain Mash Change. Seriously, how many times must I make Dark Law only for me to dodge an effect? I'm not even making Dark Law for Dark Law at this point in time. I'm going to go ahead and special summon my Denier to my side of the field. He's looking at his options. I'm using both of those monsters for a Link Summon. That's right, linking off the Dark Law into a Predator Plant for an Anaconda, and then activating the Adusted Gold being able to fusion summon into Malicious Bane, wiping his entire board, and then following up with Predator Plant Vert Anaconda, being able to summon DPE. So this is incredible how this deck operates, being able to consistently be able to break boards, but also make it on its own. For the following sequence, I'll use DPE to destroy his last phase down card, which was a bluff, a Sword Soul Emergence, so a huge bluff, and it's up to me to secure the game. Unfortunately, my opponent does have a pot of desires. Is this going to be the cards that allow him to get back into the game? Not me. Will this be the exact same situation as Virtual World? He's going to draw two additional cards from his hand, mull over his options, prepare to make a huge board as he looks into his graveyard. He has a shooter to be able to bounce a card on my side of the field. But fortunately for me, the cards that he drew weren't really going to help him in this particular time. Fortunately for me, that is going to be game.
That was insane. I really like that Sword Soul matchup. I actually did have another matchup with him prior, still trying to figure out the kinks of the deck, and I made some changes. The final build of this hero deck for the Gauntlet is going to be a lot different from the starting build, and of course I have my explanations. For the hero monsters, it's just Elemental Hero Stratos and two copies of Shadow Mist. Now, Solid Soldier was actually solid, but not necessarily a great card. There were times where I just didn't want to summon it. There are times where it just didn't do much. Ultimately, if my opponent effect veilered or used uh, infinite impermanence, my turn was pretty much over. I wanted to dedicate my summon to Elemental Hero Stratos. Shadow Mist is really good. Not only is it a card that is a reinforcement of the army, you're going to be typically using that. It's your prime discard candidate for your vision hero increase for the destiny heroes one plasma one dynatag two malicious one celestial and one denier now the only destiny hero that i think is okay is destiny hero celestial all of the other destiny hero monsters pretty much overperformed destiny hero dynatag was a late addition because i realized that i needed an additional high level destiny hero monster and then destiny hero dystopia actually is a good Yu-Gi-Oh card that can be easily fusion summoned moving forward to the vision hero monsters there's three copies of vision hero ferris two copies of vion and increase there were times that i did break with increase it happens i mean it is what it is sometimes didn't stop me from going full combo, often didn't stop me from OTKing. Vision Hero Ferris, I think is important strictly because it's an extender even after your starter gets negated. And your starter more often than not is Vision, or I'm sorry, Elemental Hero Stratos, if not Vision Hero Vion. I think that it's locking into hero monsters really does suck, but you kind of don't have a choice. Uh, getting this combo off almost guaranteed that you'll probably be able to OTK. Evil Hero Adusted Gold, this card was phenomenal. Um, I've seen a couple of builds not play a Dusty Gold, but as you can see in a lot of the games that we played, this was an amazing follow-up Yu-Gi-Oh card that allowed me to break my opponent's board and more often than not control the tempo and go for game. Now for the spells, I'm still like, I'm still, the jury's still out on uh, three copies of Emergency Call. Uh, there's only one real target and that's to play six copies of Stratos. But if I already have Stratos, I get Shadow Mist to discard with Vision Hero of Ferris. So that was pretty good. I technically play four with a reinforcement of army, but this can also search Vion. And then a hero lives to special summon that Stratos to my side of the field. I felt that Stratos was a centerpiece in all of my testing because getting that first search off was crucial. If my opponent did negate it. I had other ways to make sure I got that effect off, like a uh, masked change and forbidden droplet. I felt that um, as long as I can get into the Stratos and resolve its effect nine times out of 10, you're in a really good spot to win. Moving forward um, for the fusion spells, three copies of fusion destiny. This card was amazing. It was a godsend. The fact that I can resolve this effect more than once made every single fusion destiny live is really good. Uh, one copy of dark calling for uh, dusted gold, one copy of polymerization. This card is bananas. It's the reason why I play two DPE now in this deck. I can legitimately fuse outright for DPE and then just keep playing that way. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, three copies of match change. To be honest, <laughs> this card underperformed in the essence that I thought it would. I thought I'd be making Dark Law a lot more, but if you guys seen in the video, oh, <laughs> I was making Dark Law just to dodge effects and then link off the Dark Law. I felt so bad about Dark Law, but this just really, it helps you dodge a lot of uh, important effects in the game. Three copies of Forbidden Jawless to or Droplet to negate your opponent's board three copies of Forbidden Chalice to negate your opponent board, and now three copies of Infinite Impermanence. It's really funny how Bash Change is essentially Droplet Chalice type card. It's it's all the same thing. Moving forward for the extra deck, there is literally, there's a couple of slots that you guys can interact with, but Wonder Driver is good. Uh, some players said that it was overextension. This card is not. It's, it helps you OTK in so many situations. And, um, one thing I do want to mention is that I never missed uh, Elemental Hero Neos. Never. Not a single time. Every single time I had game, and if even if I didn't have game after cracking my opponent's board, I had a board that my opponent just couldn't handle. So, uh, Wonder Driver was really good because it let me set those fusion cards yet again. Uh, Vert came up quite a few times when you don't activate your Vision Hero Vion. I never needed two copies of Cross Crusader. One Crusader was normally enough. The Blast is probably one of the most important cards in the deck, changing my straddles into something else. Uh, Anki was a late addition. 
Uh, I don't think that I needed this many dark targets. To be honest, I would really run one Anki and one Dark Law, but again, there's space for you to run whatever you want. Possibly you want to run in the Decimator, possibly you want to run some other cards. Um, I genuinely even thought about playing Pot of Prosperity in his deck, but halving the damage, I can't inflict 16,000 damage consistently. When I figured that out, is you know, maybe I had to play the Neos. Uh, one Vision Hero Adoration, one Trinity, this guy came out all of the time. One Malicious Bane, one Dystopia, one Dangerous, and two copies of Phoenix Enforcer. If the game does go into a grind, I can make Phoenix Enforcer. If they get rid of the Phoenix Enforcer, I can make another one with ease. So the base combo for this particular hero deck is to be able to two card OTK your opponent. The most important component to your deck is having elemental hero status in your hand. And then the second most important cards is to either have elemental hero shadow mist or vision hero Ferris. This is the reason why we play multiple copies of emergency call and reinforcement of the army, because it will increase the success of having either of these cards into our hand. And if we have these cards into our hand, we can always search the other. Same thing if we had these two cards in our hand, we could always just search the shadow mist. But let me show you how this combo works two card otk here and allows you to push through your opponent's board we're going to go off by starting by normal summoning elemental hero stratos stratos will search our other counterpart and then we'll use the effect of ferris discarding the shadow mist to summon itself using the effect of shadow mist as chain link one and the effect of ferris as chain link two we'll place vision hero increase into our spell and trap card zone and then we will add from our decks to our hand evil hero a duster from here, we'll use the effect of increased special summoning itself by tributing the Ferris and then allowing us to special summon Vision Hero Vion. Trigger the effect of Vision Hero Vion to send Destiny Hero Malicious and then use the effect of Vion to banish the Elemental Hero Shadow Mist to add polymerization from your deck to your hand. From here, we're going to do quite some link summoning that will actually allow us to get deeper into our combo. You're going to start off by linking any two of your hero monsters into your extra hero cross crusader, which will trigger its effect to allow you to special summon destiny hero malicious to your side of the field. Use the effect of extra hero cross crusader to tribute the destiny hero malicious. And here's where a lot of players would actually add elemental hero honest neos from their deck to their hand. But in this particular build, we're going to add destiny hero denier and I'll explain to you why later. We're going to link off our cross crusader and our last hero monster into our extra hero wonder driver and then we're going to use the effect of destiny hero malicious banishing itself from the graveyard to special summon another copy of malicious because we have a level six or higher destiny hero monster on our side of the field and a destiny hero monster we can go ahead and hard fusion summon using both malicious and denier into a destiny hero phoenix enforcer but more importantly triggering the effect of our extra hero wonder driver to be able to set polymerization back to our side of the field now since we have a destiny hero monster on our field or in our graveyard we can special summon destiny hero denier back to our side of the field using its effect to place the banish malicious to the top of our deck banish the copy of destiny hero malicious from your graveyard to summon the last one from your deck and here's where you have multiple options here we can use polymerization fusing three hero monsters into a vision hero trinity i like to go into this one when our opponent has monsters that we need to punch over as vision hero trinity is 5,000 attack it can attack every single one of those monsters but keep in mind it can attack directly so if you are in a situation where you want to be able to attack directly well there's a couple of things you can do one cheeky thing is that you can actually just fusion summon into another copy of your destiny hero phoenix enforcer but that only does so much since phoenix enforcer is a hard ones per turn a lot of times you're probably going to want to go into a vision hero adoration this card has similar properties to our trinity as it allows it to get over an opponent's monster but it can also attack directly our final piece is that we're going to use our elemental hero dusted gold to add dark calling and then dark calling to be able to banish a dusted gold as well as vision hero ferris for malicious bane at the very lowest this is over 10,000 damage on the board meaning that the other four cards in your hand can be used towards breaking your opponent's board or helping you set up past your opponent's plays the next combo in this deck is another two card otk that you may not have paid attention to now this particular combo is a lot less harder to search into but we do run a decent amount of quantities inside of this deck to be able to perform the combo at very worst vision hero vion plus any destiny hero is at least a dpe to your side of the field but to make this an otk we're going to need destiny hero denier or destiny hero malicious in our hand i'm going to go ahead and put destiny hero denier in our hand going to go ahead and start off by normal summoning our vision hero vion using its effect to send elemental hero shadow mist to add destiny hero malicious 
We'll then use Visionary Ovion's other effect to banish the malicious to add polymerization. Well, I mean, look what we have here. We have a Destiny Hero monster that's level six or higher, and we also have a Destiny Hero monster. We can use polymerization fusing both of these monsters into our DPE, and then from here, we'll banish Destiny Hero Malicious to be able to special summon another copy of Destiny Hero Malicious. It really doesn't stop here as now we'll link off both our Vision Hero Fion and our Destiny Hero Malicious into our Extra Hero Wonder Driver. This card is literally the proprietor of so many mad combos. And then we will use the effect of our Destiny Hero Denier to summon itself under the Extra Hero Wonder Driver. Triggering both our monsters effects, we'll place the Destiny Hero Malicious back to the top of our deck and a Super Polymerization face down. We can then follow up by banishing Malicious to summon Malicious to our side of the field, using both of our Destiny Hero monsters for another link into Extra Hero Cross Crusader, triggering its effect to special summon a Destiny Hero monster to the side of the field, and then using its effect to tribute a monster or a Destiny Hero monster to search Evil Hero Dusted Gold. Now we can wrap up this combo by using Polymerization, fusing both our Extra Hero Cross Crusader and our Wonder Driver into our Adoration, and then a Dusted Gold. We're gonna use that into our Dark Calling, and now Dark Calling, we're gonna use that into our Malicious Bane. And that is another way where two cards literally equals an OTK inside of this deck. Now for the breakdown, I actually think that this deck is completely incredible. Heroes have so many ways to make an OTK, and that's why I wanted to focus on going second. Not saying that going second is the correct way to play heroes, there are some really good going first builds as well. Now there are some problems with this deck, it will struggle to Nibiru and Joel and Logbird, cards that are commonly at least put into the side deck. I suggest if you want to combat those, if your meta is heavy with those particular cards, potentially cross out Designator in playing Nibiru and Joel inside of your deck. Not only will you be able to stop your opponent's biggest plays, you'll also be able to cross out when your opponent wants to stop you. Also, Imperial Order and Anti-Spell Fragrance are terribly powerful cards against this strategy. My recommendation to be able to combat that is to potentially play Cosmic Cyclones or Twin Twisters in your sideboard and hope that your opponent just doesn't hard open Imperial Order like some of the players I played against did. Keep in mind, Stratos does have the effect to destroy spell and trap cards on the field up to the number of hero monsters you control, so it's not the end of the world. It just sucks if you don't have a way to proc your Stratos and your opponent hard opens the Imperial Order on game one. Overall, I do think that heroes are one of the best decks to use DPE, and if the Forbidden List does go into the favor of banning Vert Anaconda, well, this deck might get even better, because again, it's one of the best decks that can even hard make DPE without the use of Vert and without the use of Dark Fusion. But that is all that I have for today. I really hope you enjoyed this gauntlet series, not only building heroes and showing you different variations, as well as showing you what I would play and why I play these particular cards and some duels against the top meta decks. If this is a series that you wanna see continued, go ahead and destroy that like button. Be sure to share this series with a friend, possibly a hero lover, or maybe even a hero hater to learn some of those weaknesses. But more importantly, let me know down below in the comment section this is one you wanna see and then check out these videos as I'll catch you on the next one.